hang when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. And what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty. And if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. You will have been able to tell from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description, that today I am doing a, a first impression review, and indeed tutorial, on this palette. This is the Dusk to Dawn palette from C Colour Cosmetics. So, if you want to find out exactly what this looks like on the inside, which colours I chose for today's gloriously fabulous look, what I'm going to witter on about today, but most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend you have the best seat in the house. I've said it for years. Sammy the Sloth Straw backs me up. For those of you who are new, I'll say it again. Now's the time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I'll have shown you the outside of this in the intro, the outside of this, the outside of this in the intro. Um, this is by C Colour. I have used one of their palettes on here before, it was the dupe of one of the Natasha Denona palettes, which I absolutely loved. And then they went through a stage where the international shipping to the UK was exorbitant and then they weren't shipping to the UK and now they're back to their eight bucks shipping so I picked up two palettes I picked up this one and I picked up this one uh, this is obviously a dupe for the Huda Khaki palette because of course I don't use Huda on my channel this is a dupe for the ABH which I do use but it's the Jackie Weiner version, or the Yucky Weiner as I call her. Um, I don't show her on my channel until she properly apologises to Betty Page for calling her a thief. Mm. Um, and there were loads of other reasons. If you want to know all the reasons why I'm not showing any Yucky Weiner stuff on YouTube, there's a film, Hits, Shits and Maybes, so just, if I remember I'll link it, if not, it's easy enough to find. So this is the dupe of the ABH Yucky Winer palette, and it's called Dusk Till Dawn. Got a good mirror, and like that, you actually get more in terms of shadow than you do with the ABH palettes. These are <laughs> 0 0.51 ounces. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. It does say Prime Inception, Raven and Genesis. Contain a colourant that is not approved for the eye area in the US, Canada and Brazil. Basically, it means if you have got sensitive skin, you might have a reaction to it and it might stain your lids. But, that's about it really. Um, I've only swatched a couple of these just to see how they looked on my skin, but I haven't done a swatch swatch yet. Um... But I'm going to have a play with this today because I want to, basically. And I need to look halfway decent because I've got to take my mother in law to a dental appointment. So, 
this is still a teaching channel uh, because of that because of my chronic pain I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with I don't cut any of the blending out unless I'm doing a cut crease not planning on doing one of those today haven't got enough time um, because I've been up since half four it's currently ten o'clock because it's taken till now to get some decent light because I use daylight and strip light um, I also zoom right in close so it's just my eyes on screen this does mean when I'm looking down to add more pigment clean a brush change a brush etc you do get a glimpse of my lovely widow's peak hairline but that's just the price to be paid for just having my eyes on screen the reason I do that is twofold one you don't get to see the number of times I wince in pain which would put you off trust me um, but two if you're watching me on a phone screen and you normally wear glasses or contacts you've got to take your glasses off to apply your makeup you should, you should hopefully still be able to see what I'm doing final chit chat before I start playing I'm about to insert a short clip where I talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes once that has finished I will be there to put some of these pigments onto my lips so here's your clip now um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly. And you don't use any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. 
and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same mount lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, okay, I'm going to use this Real Techniques doesn't have a no, oh yes it does, 305 brush. Um, it's clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to start off by going into Inception, which is a really nice mauve. Not too much kick up in that pan, as you can see. Um, kick up doesn't worry me anyway, at least you know you're getting pigment on the brush. And I'm going to be doing my Viennese Waltz Blend, which of course is natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle in the middle and reverse turns to come back out again better um, the reason I do that is because I'm 46 years old I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds skin on my eyelids moves but I know teenagers who've always been slim that have exactly the same issue so by doing this rather than just the windshield wiper you're less likely to get that telltale tiger striping where your lid has folded over. Right, I'm going to start just above where my natural crease is. And I always start at the outside edge because if you do deposit too much, it's far easier to blend it out when your nose isn't in the way. I'm just going to build this colour up gently across the eye. So C colour, they have got a couple of palettes that they've curated themselves but the majority of their palettes are dupes of larger brands. Um, I discovered them through Rhonda Hot Mess Mama MD which stands for Makeup Diva, if you're wondering. Um, and she has a discount code Hot Mess 10 that I use every time I shop with them. So like I said, not my discount code, it's hers. I think she owns, earns from it, but to be honest, I don't care. Saves me 10%. Um, I'm just going to... This palette, I think, was... It's either 10 or 12 bucks, so, you know, it's a, it's a good price by the time you sort of break down what, you know, compare that to Anastasia's 40 odd. Now, I buy Anastasia palettes. I liked the colour scheme of this palette, but there was no way I was going to use it on my channel with Yucky Winer's name on it. I have been waiting for a good dupe and finally found one. Now, where do I stand with dupes and where do I stand with copies or fakes? This does not purport to be Anastasia. This is called Dusk Till Dawn. The um, the pans in the palette are different shapes. 
it does not in any way, apart from the colour scheme, resemble the ABH palette. So if you saw them side by side, you could easily see, without even picking them up and looking at the inside of them, which one is the genuine ABH and which one is the dupe palette. Now, I don't mind those. I'm not keen when they dupe indie brands because that's not on. But for a large brand like ABH, Natasha Denona, etc. A lot of us don't have the money to buy. You know, if I buy Anastasia stuff, I usually... The only ones that I bought on release were Riviera and Alyssa Ashley. The others I've all bought in a sale or second hand. Um, oh, I bought one from Renaissance as well at full price. Um, but I know there's no way I'm going to buy this particular, this is actually that blended out really nicely. I'm just going to clean the brush on this clean washcloth. Uh, I don't like colour switches, they are far too harsh on the bristles. And then I'm going to blend this out with a little bit of shade Prime. The reason I do both eyes, both colours at the same time, is because your eyes are not symmetrical and sometimes you have to do slightly different shapes both sides in order for it to look the same. Right, so I'm going to pop into Prime, which is this really lovely pink here, and use that to blend out with. Yeah, I don't have an issue with dupes because they're not claiming to be the actual. And if you've got the money for the actual one, you're going to buy the actual one. Unless, like me, you have an issue with either the brand or the person they collabed with. Um, fakes, however, are something completely different. Fakes look exactly like the original. They try to persuade you they are the original. So if you set them side by side and didn't pick them up and investigate closely, you'd be hard pushed in a lot of cases to tell the difference between the original and the dupe, uh, and the fake. Those are the ones that I take issue with because those are the ones that usually end up funding some kind of crime network. Usually drugs or sex trafficking. Um, so I have issues with those. As I said, if you can afford to buy the actual product, you're going to buy the actual product. The only people buying these dupes are people that can't afford the actual product. Or, because over here in Europe, you don't get to take a palette back if you don't like it. Once you've started to use it, unless there's something really wrong with the palette, then you don't get to take it back. There's no returns thing on, on used makeup. So, in a lot of cases, a lot of people will buy a dupe palette to see whether they actually like the, um, the actual colour scheme before buying the full priced actual product. Right, I'm changing brushes now for a more tapered brush and I'm going to go into Raven which is this lovely purple just here. So I've gone in for these three so far. And this I'm going to follow my crease. So if you've moved your crease line and created a new one as per the clip that I inserted, then uh, 
this is the point to follow your new crease. This one has significantly more kick up than the previous two. So I'm making sure to tap off well, even though I haven't done my base yet, so it's not really too much of an issue. So I'm just going to run this through the crease. Get all right down into that corner. And blend back out again. Yeah, I think Manny did a film just recently um, because they duped his uh, his first palette from his brand. The um, God, I can't think what it's called now. One where it's half bright, half neutral, with like drag eyes on the front. Pretty sure people are currently screaming at the screen when it's cold. <sighs> but anyway, um, and he actually, I haven't watched it yet, it's in my to watch folder. He's like, it's not right they're doing this. And I can understand him being upset, because he's an indie brand. So obviously he's not going to want his stuff copied. And, as I said, I'm not as keen when they do indie brands like that. But again, if you can't afford his palette, but you want to be able to create same looks from it, you know, it's, it's difficult. Okay, this one is slightly patchier. Um, but I do struggle just here uh, on both eyes with really really dry patches so it could just be that let me grab my fluffy brush back again and just because sometimes using a fluffier brush can really help with colours that have gone patchy yeah see in my in the mirror it's not patchy, but in my viewfinder, it is. It's one of those annoying shades. It's the trouble with me filming in HD, I suppose. Although it does mean that if you do blow me up, blow me up, not like literally blow me up, but if you do watch me on your TV screen, you shouldn't lose resolution because I'm filming in 1080 and that's why my films take so long to export I mean one sort of 45 minute film can take up to seven hours to export because I'm exporting it in HD and because of course my laptop is not brand new so how's your day been today? has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, I sincerely hope that tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, then I hope it's going to turn out to be as fabulous as you are, my darlings. Uh, if you're in the UK wondering how long this took to arrive, it didn't take too long at all, um, just over a week I think, and that's with all the current 
lockdown and stuff in the UK, so not that it's a proper lockdown really. Kids are still at school. Pubs are still open until 10 pm. Well, why have they shut the pubs again? I think they've shut the pubs again now. Unless they're serving food. Okay. Like I said, that it's annoying that that looks patchy. Because it doesn't in real life. What you can do though, if you have got one that's gone patchy, do all your blending so you've got it as softly as you want. And then put a little bit of pigment on the end of the brush. And just tap over the area very lightly, very gently, to just build up the colour where it looks like it's gone patchy. Rather than Swirling and blending. Right. Time to put something interesting on the lid. I think I might go into Alpha, that green pigment. So I'm looking very, very pink at the moment. <clears throat> now obviously you never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush but once I've got pigment on the brush I will be using this Makeup Obsession Fix Fit thing okay. to wet it. I wet all pigments that I use partly because it helps to minimise fallout uh, and partly because if you have got slightly dodgy pigment, it can make it appear brighter. Right. So, going into this alpha pigment. It's not proving very easy to pick up on the brush. And it looks like it's going hard pan, but it's still letting me pick pigment up. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, you can use anything to, to wet the brush, but once you've sprayed, your ferrule is wet. So tuck it into your knuckles and spin, because you don't want moisture getting down here and loosening the glue on the bristles, because then you'll end up with a stick. Right, so I'm going to try applying... I'm just going to grab my, some micellar water on a pad and just, sorry, tidy up the edge. Otherwise, in editing, that will really annoy me. <clears throat> yeah, you can use any um, spray. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu you can use a priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray you can even just save an old spray bottle fill it with water each time you do your makeup right, let's get this on first time I'm using a palette I never do a cut crease because I like to see how much pigment Or how much opacity rather each pigment has and for being quite difficult to pick up this is going on really nicely it's um it's got like a gold shift to the green which is really pretty like a greeny browny goldy I like the green brown pigment but lighter. 
that's super pretty. Just gonna use the tip of the bristles to just blend it into the mat at the edge there. Right, dry the brush off on the washcloth. I have a new um, setting powder to try today. Picked up the um, Laura Mercier translucent glow because I like her translucent. So I thought I'd try the glow one today. Right, again, picked up pigment. Now with this other eye, because of the super deep creasing that I've got here from when my eye was pulled around when I was a kid. I do have to do the one thing I tell you not to, which is stretch my eyelid out. But I only put it out as far as I need to, to straighten the creasing. And as soon as it's done, I gently let go again. Because if I don't do this, I've found from experience that um, when I'm applying the pigment like this, if I haven't stretched the lid out, the pigment just builds up loosely in the creasing. And then as it dries, it then starts to flake off and into my eye during the day, which is super, super painful. And you can see this lid moves an awful lot more than this one did. And bearing in mind this was, I was five years old when they were pulling this eye around initially. So it just shows you 40 odd years on and I'm seeing the damage that was done. Right. I am going to uh, pause you now for a moment or two um, while I pop base products on, etc. And then I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, for me, obviously, I've got a little bit of work to do now. But for you, my darlings, there will be no wait at all. It's going to be completely instant. Okay, I am back. I have done my usual soap brows. Um, I use the, uh, for a uh, UK indie brand, Pink Honey. And this is the Honey Glue in Strawberry Sherbet. It's basically soap in a little jar with a hole for your spoolie. Um, they recommend using it wet. I recommend using it dry because then it leaves your brows slightly sticky. So when you then use a brow brush to brush whichever colour powder on you want to use, I used Raven, which is the darkest one that I used here, um, to go through the brow. It, the, the powder has something to stick to and it sets the brow shape so it's like a win-win um, just my personal preference what do I think of this setting powder I quite like the fact that I've not got any highlighter on yet and yet I'm glowy You watch, I'll get out in the sun and I'll just be like a bloody Belisha beacon. Right, flat top brush. I'm going into Inception, which is the first shade that I used, the mauve. And I'm going to pop that along the lower lash line.
although I have now found some pencil liners that I can use without it making my eyes too irritated because I've got quite a drive on me today taking mother-in-law to her appointment and back I uh, I'm not going to pop anything in the water line, so I'm doing my usual where I just blow out the colour underneath the eye. And the a brush that I'm going to use to do that with is this one. It's the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's flat topped, but it's chunky, so perfect for blowing out colours under the eye but you can use any chunky brush really right I'm dipping into prime which is that pink that I used up here to soften the edge and I'm just going to repeat the same thing down here and just really blow out and soften and smudge that lower lash line I really like how these are blending. There's little to no fallout from them, which is great. I always use a clean washcloth now to clean my brushes with because I've just found that colour switches are far too harsh on the bristles. Right, I'm going to dip into this lit shade. It's a really nice silvery white. And the brush I'm using is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay about a decade ago. I'm just going to pop a little bit of this up under the tail of my brow. I did a neutral look the other day. I had so many people message me going, are you not well? You don't do neutral looks. And obviously I'm using the same colour now to do in a corner and just bring it down to blend in. Under the eye like so. That's super pretty. Right, my beautiful ones, I'm going to pause you for one last time while I uh, pop some highlight on my face, chuck some mascara on, choose whichever lippy I'm going to wear today, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my finished look and first impressions on this palette. For you, again, instant. I am back. Okay, uh, I used my Lethal Cosmetics highlighter in a scatter for my cheeks, which is white base with like a lilac y shift. Love, love, love this. I have to hide it away to stop myself from using it, otherwise, I'd use it every day. Uh, the mascara is my Catrice Glamandol Volume Waterproof Mascara. This is an absolute dupe for Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. And the lippy is a Gerald Cosmetics. It's the Longwear Hydra Matte in shade Bear It All. I love, love, love Gerald lippies. They are by far the nicest. I mean, when I was still using Jeffree Star stuff, his was my 
absolute go-to. These, very, very close second. The only reason I went for the Jeffrey ones over these is because he had waftier colours. But if I'm looking for a normal colour, normal, wearable, whatever, um, I'll grab a Gerard anyway. So they are so light on your lips. They do not suck the moisture out of them through the day. I do have a discount code with them, which is listed down below, but make sure you use the link that is shown because I know coming up around Black Friday they've got a load of deals on. I've got details of it on my Insta and my Twitter. Um, and while those deals are on, my code won't work. But if you make sure you use the link, it still tracks it back so they know that you found it through me. Uh, they, we did get an email through recently saying they're looking at rejigging who has codes and who doesn't. And because I'm not the sort of person to push my code very much, I might end up losing it. So make the most of it while I've still got it. But this is what I'm talking about. The Dusk to Dawn palette. Now obviously I used these three, this one and this one. Which are probably out of all of them the most difficult shades to create because browns and stuff, if you can't create a blendable brown matte you shouldn't be producing makeup anyway. Um, purples and reds are difficult, greens are difficult so that's why I chose those for today's look. Um, so far I'm really pleased with it. Uh, you saw yourself, the mattes blended out really well together, pigment built up very smoothly. Um, the, the only mm, was the Raven shade, which on screen looked patchy, but in real life it doesn't. When I put the photos up on Insta, you'll be able to see that it's not patchy at all. Um, but yeah, I really, really like this. And if you, like me, don't support Yucky Winer, but really liked the colour scheme, or just can't afford ABH prices, but love the colour scheme, then... I don't think you're going to go far wrong getting this. It is a very big palette though. Um, what have I got that I can compare it to that most people will know the size of? Um, here we go. Right, this is the one of the BH Sweet Shop palettes, the cherry on top. And you can see it's a lot longer. Um, come on, slide back in. There we go. It's, I suppose it's similar in length too. No, it's even longer than the Coloured Rain Queen of Hearts. So that's that says a lot because that's a long palette. Um, but yeah, I really like this. I don't think you're going to regret buying it. So if you like it, can't afford the ABH ones, but I've been looking for that particular colour scheme. Crack on. Right. Um, as I said, Rhonda does have um, her discount code Hot Mess Ten that you can use on the site and you can use it over and over and over again it's not a one time use uh, I think she earns from it I'm not entirely sure I do earn from my Gerard one by the way I don't earn from my Crow and Pebble um, each sale earns me a pebble which I can then use to offset against future orders but I don't actually earn cash from it right just to be completely clear, it, it's all clearly listed in the description whether I earn from my discount codes or not anyway. So, 
If you are one of my regular 4F babies, please double check you're still um, subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people, but they're leaving my films in your suggested queue, so it's not obvious you've been deleted. They are also knocking all of the notification bells back to personalised from all. Um, I had to go through all of the channels that I, sorry I've got a really weepy eye this morning I had to go through all of the channels that I follow and change them all back to all uh, but I'm still not getting emails through at the moment so goodness knows when they're going to actually start sending emails again but just make sure you've got them set to all so that if they ever do start uh, you'll actually get the emails You the fridge to go clonk right um <laughs> if uh you've tripped over me some other way hi hello welcome i hope you enjoyed it here uh this is the kind of thing you get from my channel you get colorful makeup and me blethering on about all kinds of everything and nothing much at all so if that sounds comforting and soothing and calming and all the things that you might need then it would be awesome if you two would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest group of people on Tinternet. It's super easy to do, you just hit that red subscribe button, turn it grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that we'll eventually get emails again until then I have an awfully large back side yes but also back catalogue of films that you can watch um, I've got other reviews like this one where I do a tutorial and give you my first impressions of a palette um, I have collabs, I have challenges, I have tags. I even read you my favourite poem in one of the films. So there's bound to be something that you'll find to interest you. So basically, if you're looking for a bit of me time, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, make a playlist, get comfy and indulge. I feel like I've been saying that for years now. Alright, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.